the freaking battery. <laughs> Why am I like this? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. It is, the, it's the end of the line. It's the end of the line for this, well, now not too bad looking little thing here. I've decided that the Jeep Wrangler JK, the cheapest Jeep Wrangler JK, abandoned by a famous TikTok star, I've decided that, that we're gonna sell it. Now it doesn't come easy because, well, you look at this thing now and I just actually gave it its first bath just the other day and I did a few more things, which I'll get to, but it cleaned up really nice. I mean, it's a properly good looking Jeep now. But you see, this morning alone, I've ordered uh, almost a thousand dollars worth of parts that are some were needs, some were wants. For that big piggy over there. Not the vet, the, uh, the, the giant F-350 there in the back, which will be a little bit more giant actually, but the C5 is finally getting its valved adjustable exhaust. I am super excited. I know you guys are too, and you've waited a long time for this. So it's, it's finally happening, like to the point where we're scheduling a date to, to install it on a lift and everything. I don't even have to do it on the ground. Again, that'll be coming soon, but today it's about this thing, which again, look at how good it cleaned up, my gosh. But first, let me get you guys back up to speed on everything that I've done to this thing in the past few days. It's just been kind of go, go, go. So I've had only a little bit of time to film the stuff as I've been doing it, but I'll get you guys caught up and then tell you what we're gonna be doing today. And then we'll be taking the Jeep for its first and final drive in my ownership. It seems like just yesterday we drove out in the tail end of a snowstorm to pick up this cheap 2007 Jeep Wrangler JK Sahara. It was abandoned by a famous TikToker, not running, and barely even movable. And it was ugly. Very ugly. We got it moving and into the garage and wasted no time getting the beat up front bumper off. Success! Oh, that's heavy. Success! Along with the hideous angry grill. And our friend, who you guys named Scully, was rehomed into the garage. We then fitted the Jeep with a factory front bumper and color matched grill, removed all the stickers on the sides, along with the yellow paper clip that somehow found its way behind the cluster screen. We fitted a new cluster cover, as well as a second hand spare tire carrier that didn't have a hole in it with missing studs. The rusted, cracked, and leaking stock muffler was replaced with a shiny and dented new one. Next, we pulled the beat and battered driver's seat to expose the biohazard of an interior that gave me four diseases during cleaning. And then I took on a project I had never done before, which was reupholstering the bottom of the driver's seat with an OEM cover. Then rebuilt the seat where I ended up needing a little assistance from my daddy. And after making sure the interior was free of any previous diseases, we bolted back in the driver's seat, which didn't turn out half bad for a job done by a virgin upholsterer like myself. Then, over the span of about eight years, scrubbed the years of brake dust caked onto the wheels, and gave the Jeep its first wash, also in probably eight years. That's what a wheel should look like, and that's what every single one of these has looked like. Ugh. But for as pretty as it looked now, the work I would learn was far from done, and there was a plethora of problems to still get sorted, which might end up being a product of my own stupidity. And now we're here at this point, and it looks really, really good, but it's not done yet because I have taken the Jeep around the block, not very far, literally just around in a loop, and the front brakes are fucked, and there's a giant clacking or clanking sound, and I believe the culprit is right there. Normally I can make this move around enough, but now I can't because I'm weak, but I believe that is the point of our clunking, so I'm gonna replace both of those. We've got our box of goodies that literally just showed up a few moments ago, so let's start installing.
Well, what a damn shame that is. On the Jeep TJ, the bushing is like split in half so you can just slide it over the sway bar. On this stupid thing, there's no seam in them. So I think I now have to undo this part of the sway bar, drop this down and I guess put the new bushing over like that, I think. Why do they have to make these so complicated? Bushings are done at least. That was a pain. That was a royal pain in the ass. But at least it's done now. I had no idea it was gonna take that long, but at least it's done. Now it's time to move on to the brakes. Those should be easy. Should, but so should have the bushings. The front brakes were in poor shape, so I replaced both front pads, rotors, and calipers. My phone just decided it didn't want to record any of it. The next day, we topped the Jeep off with orange juice and started replacing another front suspension component. And we'll get to why. So yeah, as you could see, it uh, was quite the fun past couple of days working on this thing. A lot happened. A lot got changed. Do you know what the funniest thing is? Is I am an idiot. This further proves that I'm an idiot, what happened. The reason that I changed the drag link and the sway bar bushings in there was because there was a clunking in the front. It was on this side and it looked as though it was the sway bar bushing at first. My brother shook the Jeep around as I watched it. There was tons of play in that bushing, so I changed it. Took the Jeep for a drive, it still made the clunking sound. So the next day while my dad was home, I was kind of stuck. He helped me take a look. And while we were under there, I shook the Jeep we saw that the drag link bushing uh, was shot. And the nice thing was my neighbor who's a mechanic was over as we pulled the old one out. He looked at it and said, yeah, it is. It's the bushing is shot in the drag link or the ball joint on the drag link was shot. Need to be replaced. So put the new one in. I was going to change it anyways. Went for a test drive and it still made the clunking sound. Now doing that drag link wasn't the hardest thing in the world. The bushings, mm, those kind of sucked. And that was all stuff that probably needed to be done. But when I took it for a test drive after changing both the sway bar bushings and the drag link, it still made the same clunking sound. So my brother and my dad came out to the street as I was test driving it. They could probably hear me yelling in anger. And they all walked around the Jeep as I was driving it, trying to make it make the, the thunking sound. And sure enough, they popped the hood and they found this. So I have the battery out right now, but this was in here like this. So it was in its little, you know, compartment. But as you guys may remember, this is not the correct battery for this Jeep JK. This is simply the cheapest battery that I could find at Walmart to work on the night of the snowstorm that I went to buy this thing to try to get it started to see if it ran. So it's not the right battery. It's not the OEM battery and it's not strapped down at all. So I'm such a dumbass. The noise that we were hearing, that I was hearing, the clanking in the front end. Was that? The freaking battery. <laughs> oh, why am I like this? <laughs> So, one of the last things we're doing to this Jeep before we get rid of it is putting in a fresh new battery. I have it somewhere over here. Yes, here it is. This one's from O'Reilly's, not Walmart. Oh, and this one is the correct size. Because it's the correct freaking battery. All right, now that our fresh new battery is installed, let's turn it on quick, make sure it actually turns on. We have power, that's a good sign. Starts right up, beautiful, okay. Let's shut it off before we uh, suffocate. Now, really the last thing that we need to do to this thing is give it a good proper wash in detail, but unfortunately, it's, it's raining. So very sad.
but there are some things that we can do in the garage here. Uh, I'm not gonna wash it in here, but for example, you'll see under here where the uh, the hinges, I think these hinges are still made of magnesium and they just kind of make the paint hazy below there. And then you can see over here, might have to zoom in a little bit. You can see where the stickers were. That's not adhesive, that's just hazing as well from where uh, must be the cleaner that I use to get that stuff off. But I have a solution to get all that stuff gone. And it's this, it's 3M rubbing compound. Now this isn't a paid product placement, but it could be 3M. I know you guys got the money. I could sure use some of it. Anyways, this stuff is amazing. You should be able to get it at your local parts store. Some parts stores I've noticed though, actually don't have it because it's a bit of a, uh, well, it's a bit expensive and it's pretty professional. But lucky for you guys, they do sell this stuff on Amazon and it's much, much, much cheaper uh, than it is in the parts store. It's like $20 cheaper if you get it on Amazon. So this stuff works wonders though. It can get scratches out, small scratches anyways. And uh, I'll, I'll show you what it can do. All right, see, we just got those, this weird like hazing here from, stay put, that odd little hazing from the, Getting those stickers off, so all you gotta do, take a little bit of this magic potion. A little bit on there, you don't need a ton. And we're gonna start with that one. And just buff it by hand. A little elbow grease, you know? Keep going in circles and... This may or may not be the correct way to use this, but it's always worked for me. And then you just grab a different side of your microfiber. Look at that, it's freaking magic. See, there's where it was. This is what it looked like before. Look at that, took me two seconds. So now I gotta do the rest of this side. Several days later. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's it, the Jeep JK is finally finished. It's done and it's gonna be going to a new home. Nope, it hasn't sold yet, but I did just post it onto Facebook Marketplace. Um, so that means we still have a little bit of time together. I'm gonna get probably 857 messages that say, is this item still available? And I will kindly tell them, yes it is, would you like to take a look at it? And they will leave me on red, like most women, actually. But anyways, before it goes, we're gonna pull the Jeep out of the garage, take a nice good look at it now that it's all washed, all cleaned up, and then we'll take the Jeep on its first and first and final drive um, under my ownership. Oh man, well, I'm really, really happy with the way that this Jeep JK came out. The paint didn't clean up the best. You guys can still see, I'm sure, quite a few scratches. This thing really wasn't very well taken care of in its prior life. Well, most of its life beforehand, before I got it. And uh, that definitely shows in some areas of the paint. I just couldn't couldn't really clean it up. Then again, I'm about the furthest thing from an automotive detailer that there is. So uh, so I'm sure if I hired someone to come and, and uh, really like buff and clean up the paint that it would turn out um, pretty good. But, uh, but I didn't do that because YouTube doesn't pay me enough. Anyways, it really, really cleaned up nice. It looks so much better, so much better than when we got it here. And I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. it is a it is a really nice looking Jeep now. I love the color, the maroon color, and I've gotten quite a few compliments from people driving by uh, about this Jeep, because it does, I mean, it is a sharp looking Jeep. Look at this thing. And especially the inside with that new reupholstered seat. And remember, reupholstered seat by me. This guy did that. I've never done interior stuff uh, in my life. So I think that actually came out Pretty dang good uh, for a first timer. Door panels cleaned up nicely. Besides the scratches, these Jeep JKs, the interior plastics get really, really scratched up. I remember the one my brother had was uh, was kind of the same way and he took really good care of it. But I mean, 
some of those scratches down below there like those just like how do you get those out but the rest of the interior cleaned up all right i could stand to scrub the uh the soft up here a little better i already did it once when it was off but i mean it's a jeep and it's springtime that thing's going to be coming off soon anyways get a look at the passenger side which doesn't look nearly as good as the driver's side now because i didn't reupholster the bottom of that seat uh, whereas i did the other side but still i mean for having 198,000 miles on it uh, this thing looks pretty damn good but how could we forget the very dirty part of this thing which was under here that 3.8 liter cleaned up pretty well this thing was really dirty i don't think this thing got any sort of attention for the entire life of the jeep it was really dirty in here but i tried to like scrub the aluminum on the front of the block and get rid of like the caked on oil deposits stuff like that simple stuff that i know how to do and i'd say that it cleaned up pretty good actually considering the shape that this thing came to me in but how something looks and how it performs, as I know all too well, are two completely different things. Now, the Jeep isn't registered, there's no plates on it, and there's no sticker, but we're just gonna take it around the block on a road that is not a legal road. I own all the roads around here, disclaimer. So we're just gonna take it around my block, which I own, which is a private road that I own, to see how this thing drives. It's just gonna be quick. Oh, I really do like this thing. The more and more I see it all cleaned up like this, but it has to go. Starts up nice and easy. No check engine light, no ABS light, no traction control light. Idles nice and smooth, no noises. All right, let's go around the block and try not to hit my brother's vet or mine. That would be just as bad. Shifts into gear silently and smoothly. And the whole front end is nice and tight now thanks to all those new parts. And of course, hit the brakes. And it smoothly stays straight as it's coming to a stop. real race car this thing see it's nice it really is nice this thing it's so much better than it used to be temps good no warning lights after our drive are a little low on fuel looking through that nice uncracked gauge cluster cover ladies and gentlemen we we did good we did good with this thing this thing turned out really nice really my only complaint now is the paint if the paint cleaned up a little bit better be a freaking grand slam i'm saying that because i'm wearing a baseball shirt sweatshirt i don't watch baseball sorry that was such a quick and concise drive with my luck if i went any further something would happen i'd have a blowout and be unable to get the spare tire off again or the engine would blow up i don't know but i want to thank you guys for following along with the build of this jeep jk even though we really didn't build it at all so actually, as I was editing this video, I was replying to messages uh, from an interested buyer in the Jeep. And sure enough, right now we're in the 7.3 Power Stroke, the F350, and the Jeep, you see it? It's behind us. It already sold, it sold rather quickly. I really wasn't surprised. It's springtime in New Hampshire. So it's off to its new home now. So thank you guys for watching and thanks for following around with this adventure. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy motoring.